here for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. If you've been following along, you know that I am in the middle of a build series. I am building a Red Sea G2 Reefer 425. As you can see, it is built. I built the stand. I got the sump in there. The tank is on. A lot of the equipment is ready to be placed in. And now it's actually time for me to pause and think a little bit about the livestock that's going to go in the tank. And the reason I say that is because some of the livestock that I'm going to keep um, is kind of going to play a role in the type of substrate that I want and the type of rock work and the aquascape that I'm going to do in the tank. So I wanted to walk you through the process that I took to kind of help narrow down for the substrate and the rock work. Now the other day I went and I spent some time making two different lists. One list was all corals that I wanted. I've worked in the industry for a while and honestly I haven't been able to have a fraction of the corals that I wanted to keep um, most of the time just because I didn't have enough space. But now I've got some space. So I wrote down a list of all of those beautiful corals I've been seeing at Reef of Palooza's all year and the ones that I've had on my bucket list for a long time, like that Scalemia, gotta tell you, it is at the top of my list and I can't wait to have some gorgeous scullies in this tank. Um, in addition to making that coral list, I also, um, in my Excel spreadsheet, yes, I have an Excel spreadsheet, <laughs> I listed out some of the different needs that each of those corals have. So I'm gonna give you an example. So Julian Sprung, if you're familiar with this book, has a great way to kind of break things down. So you can kind of see here, it talks about the lighting needs. So there's a lot of different corals out there and they don't all need the same amount of light. So for example, one of the corals that I want to keep is a sun coral. Those are non-photosynthetic corals and they don't need a lot of light. So I know when I'm building my rockscape, I'm going to need to have an area where it's not as bright, maybe where there's an overhang or something like that, that's going to benefit that species of coral. So that's just one example. Um, there's other corals that really love light that need a high amount of light, so you would want to place them higher in the tank. Now another thing on his list is water flow. Not all corals need the same amount of flow where they are positioned at in the tank, so I'm going to need to make sure that I have different areas in the tank that are getting different rates of flow and put those corals in there accordingly. Next up on the list is aggressiveness. Now this is something actually one of you guys have written in and asked about, and I'm working on a video about coral aggression, but corals can sting each other. Not only do they have stinging cells, but another form of aggression is growing super fast. Some of the corals that I like do grow really fast, so I'm gonna wanna make sure that I give them a buffer for where they're at in comparison to other corals. Now, on my Excel spreadsheet, as you can see, I've got a list of each of the corals. I've got where they need to be placed in the tank, whether they need to be on the bottom on that substrate, or if they need to be higher up in the tank on the reef. Um, I've also got a list of what their lighting needs um, from low, moderate, all the way up to high, and the different types of flow they need, as well as the level of aggression that they're gonna have. I even made a list of some of the different places and the vendors that I know sell these corals. Maybe I saw it at a show and I wrote down that vendor's name. So I've got those in there as well. Now let's go ahead and move on to the fish. I made a similar list for all of the fish that I want to keep. Now there's three fish already that I know are going to go in this tank. They came out of my reef tank. So one of those is a Picasso clownfish. The next one is going to be a goby. And lastly, a blue damsel. So they were kind of grandfathered into this tank, but there's a bunch of other fish that I know I want to keep. One that is at the top of my list that I've wanted for ages is the Labatt's Fairy Wrasse. I think they are beautiful fish, so hopefully I will be able to get one of those. Now, in addition, I do want a bunch of different inverts, and one of them is going to be a pistol shrimp to go along with my goby. And since I want a goby and pistol shrimp pair, 
it kind of gives me a clue to what kind of substrate I need. Now, if you're going and you're looking for substrate, you're gonna see everything from super fine sands all the way up to rather coarse substrates. And because I know that I wanna have sand sifting fish, that kind of limits me down into the size of substrate that I need. So if you do a search, you can find that sand sifting fish, um, in order for those substrate particles not to damage their gills, they need particles in between 0.5 millimeters all the way up to, it's just under two millimeters or like 1.7 millimeters in size. So that is kind of the window that I was looking at for substrate and it narrowed it down significantly. So I'm happy to announce that I already have ordered all of the sand that I'm going to be using in the tank. Next up, like I said, is the rock work and the rock scape in the tank. I originally had all of these grandiose ideas of having these minimalistic scapes, like I didn't wanna have any substrate. I just wanted to have these beautiful freestanding rock work um, features, but based on the fish that I want and the corals that I want, I know that that's not really realistic for this tank. So I'm slowly still planning out the rockscape that I want. And as soon as I get that planned, I can send that off to the manufacturer and hopefully they'll be able to send me the rocks to go ahead and build and create that rockscape. All right, that is it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed a look into how I'm planning the tank. And if you are setting up a new tank, I hope you take some of these things that I've said into consideration. If you plan ahead in advance, you're not gonna do any impulse buys, it means you're not gonna buy fish that maybe you shouldn't have or that aren't compatible, and you're gonna set yourself up for success. Another thing maybe that you would want to plan things in advance is if you're like me, it's starting to get winter time and there's not a lot of options here. So I wanna make sure that when I'm ordering fish, I have enough time to do it and enough time to get the fish in so that I'm not battling any cold winter weather or on the flip side, if you're doing this in the summertime, any of those extreme temperatures. If you've gone through this process, I would love to hear how you kind of do things. Do you have an Excel spreadsheet or do you just keep it all in your head and you know what is going on. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys next time. On behalf of saltwateraquarium.com, this has been Hillary with Waterlogged. Thanks. <laughs>